Amy is a support services company and um, does all sorts of different services, everything from rail track maintenance, a lot of highways work, um, a lot of facilities management work, so cleaning at some of the airport terminals. About 12,000 employees today. Um, it's growing very rapidly, had about 8,000 people three, three and a half years ago. Um, revenues of £1.1 billion. Pounds. Our strategy um, is leading us to grow hopefully to about £2.5 billion over the next three or four years. Three different things. One is um, for us to provide support across the business to make sure they've got the right organisational design, organisational structures in place um, to maximise their effectiveness. And that brings with it um, the need to make sure we've got the right people in place at the right time, at the right cost. Secondly, it's all about having got the right people um, in place in the organisation. It's around maximising their productivity. Um, and to me, that's all through engaging the employees as much as possible so they come to work really wanting to give um, them the maximum they can. And the third area is all around the HR function itself. Um, the managers and employees have a need to get support and service from the HR function, but what they want is that to be as quick, easy to use, um, as effective as it possibly can be. We had about um, 8,000, uh, sorry, about 4,000 job titles for 8,000 employees um, back three and a half years ago. So we put in place a career path framework structure which moved that into bands and job families and had about 450 different jobs um, which were well defined. Uh, we also looked at flattening the organisation. Um, there were instances of sometimes 15 layers from uh, chief executive down to frontline operative um, which of course is very inefficient. We set ourselves a target of flattening structures so we had a maximum of seven layers, um, seven managerial layers which we've now achieved. We believe that the fundamental key to um, employees being as productive as they can is the management employee ratio uh, relationship. Getting the right managers in place with the right motivation and the right capabilities has been really key um, to the way we've tried to move the company forward. So we've done a lot of work around defining who are our managers, um, getting the right spans of control, making sure they really are management roles, um, explaining what we expect of those managerial roles and then a lot of work upskilling uh, the managers um, in terms of the capabilities they need. Three big layers, um, senior managers, operational managers and then frontline supervisors. Um, and what we do is every year we put all of those individuals through two lots of two day sessions um, to really help upskill them um, so they feel very comfortable and are equipped uh, to provide the um, support and services they need to the employees. Um, so it's a big investment um, and it's not about classroom training, it's a lot about um, case studies. So we take real life case studies, um, 24 hour challenges and put them through real experiences um, and uh, they get to work together, learn from them, their colleagues around the business um, about how to handle some of the difficult situations. But we believe that's had a real impact on our employee satisfaction levels. HR uh, provide uh, a lot of support to the bidding um, and business development teams. When there is a potential opportunity, um, an HR person will be allocated to the bidding team to work with the business developers, um, put the bid together, make sure the right workforce mix um, is in the bid proposition, make sure um, we're selling uh, a, an interesting employee value proposition. We have a, a mobilisation team who go in and work for the few weeks before um, the people transfer to be transferred over to us um, through all the consultation period, um, all the data that needs to be transferred over, uh, right the way through to day one when they become AMI employees and then of course for the next usually a year or so as they gradually integrate into the organisation. If you can get the opportunity to work outside of HR, take it, um, because when you are um, an HR director, you need to first and foremost be a business person and you need to understand the business you're supporting fully. Very, very important that you understand you know, the financial side of the business, the business development, um, the operational side, and can really bring that to bear and therefore provide HR solutions that really support the business. I think it's all about moving laterally through different specialist areas in HR, um, so ensuring you have expertise in areas perhaps like reward or learning and development, talent, um, or it could be organisation design or it could be recruiting, um, but my preference would be to see people with a couple of those specialisms as well as a generalist background and a business perspective. 
back three and a half years ago, we had um, a fairly siloed HR structure um, with different divisions, different HR functions, um, which we felt was inefficient um, and we weren't sharing best practice across the organisation. So we migrated to the standard Ulrich model with the shared service centre um, and the HR business partners and specialist areas. Quite a challenging time. Um, uh, business, um, business managers found it difficult to um, understand the idea of not having an HR person right by their side to do the administration for them and to handhold them through um, disciplinary grievances, whatever it might be. Um, but we tried um, to work our way through that by painting a picture for the managers of what it would look like. So when they woke up, when this was all in place, what a day in the life of a manager would like. Um, so by articulating that, um, it made it a little bit clearer as to what we were heading to, um, because pre that they weren't really clear what we meant when we said we were going to change the way HR worked. Um, so we spent a lot of time communicating with the managers and indeed with the employees. Um, we introduced technology, so we introduced self-service um, using SAP functionality. Um, and we also introduced um, a frontline query handling service. So through the service centre, if they have any queries about um, any employee issue, um, administration, whether you be a manager or an employee, you go to one single number through the service centre and we have some very strict service um, level agreements with the business that we must turn around things within certain periods of time. Um, it's not an easy journey to set up uh, an efficient shared service centre. Uh, a lot of it is all about data. It's tough and a lot of process mapping, but it is well worth it. Um, and I think the managers would definitely say, if you were to ask them, that service is significantly better now than it used to be. But at the same time, we've taken out cost. And our ratio of HR, and HR to employees has um, significantly improved. It was a difficult time um, because we put in place the service centre um, and as we put in place the service centre, we had to decide what we did with the people who had been doing some of those activities out in the different divisions. Some of them moved into the service centre, some of them didn't like the idea of going to a service centre environment, but again, once they got used to it and realised they could learn a lot, um, appreciated it. Others um, were put through an assessment uh, process to see whether or not they were capable of becoming what we newly defined as the real HR business partner. We did lose a few people at that point um, because some people weren't right for those roles and we did recruit some new people into those HR business partner roles. You couldn't just rename somebody um, who had been an HR manager, suddenly they became an HR business partner and their title changed. It's all about a different set of skills and capabilities. So what we've done is this programme of activities to really help support them and upskill them so they're equipped um, to provide really effective um, support to the business managers that they're, they're covering the area for. The first one is about uh, would your employees and managers in the company you work in buy the HR services that you provide if they were given the choice? If they could go to market to somebody else to get those services from or they could go to yourselves, would they definitely choose yourselves? And if you don't think they would, then I think there's some things probably as an HR practitioner you need to do in your own organisation to get them to that place. I think the, the second one is have you got an HR team that are truly commercially focused, um, that really do understand the business, how the business makes money, um, and then secondly bring the HR knowledge and expertise they have to bear, um, because I think it needs to be that way around, rather than they're an HR expert um, who has lots and lots of fancy um, ideas, um, but actually they're not really practically focused on what the business needs. And I think the third thing is, um, I talked earlier about managers and ensuring we get the maximum employee productivity um, by ensuring you've got effective managers. Do you honestly believe in your organisation you've got the right managers um, that you can work with and you can train and skill them, but if you haven't got the right managers in place, then I think you're always going to find it a real challenge to maximise that productivity and that employee engagement.